people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fingers and say that's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. It's official. A few days ago, it was announced that Senecia Estriada would be unifying titles with Tina Ruprecht on the undercard of Ramirez versus Comey, set to go down Saturday on the 25th of March in Fresno, California. We talked about that intel two or three weeks ago, and it does appear to have checked out. Senecia Estrada will finally get the chance to unify titles in the minimum weight division. It seems it didn't take the people at top rank very long to get Senecia a meaningful fight, a significant fight. A better fight, in my opinion, than a Yocasta Valle fight would have been as Tina Ruprecht already beat Yocasta Valle some years ago. Although that's not saying that Estrada versus Valle wouldn't be a good fight in and of itself. It would be, and based on the lay of the land, it looks like the undisputed crown will be contested between Yocasta Valle and the winner of this fight. Winner of this fight, who I anticipate will be Senecia Estriada. Now, Senecia and Tina have more things in common than perhaps people realize. They're both very athletic fighters, balanced, good boxers, good punchers. What separates them is offense. Senecia Estriada, she can play the aggressor and she can play the defender equally well, but she's most gifted as an offensively minded fighter, a spiteful fighter. They both do a lot of things well, you understand. They're both athletic, both light on their feet, bouncy. Nimble. But offensively, I feel like Senecia's got more tools. Senecia is a switch hitter. She can fight orthodox, she can fight southpaw, whereas Tina, Tina for the most part is an orthodox fighter that fights out of the orthodox stance, whereas Senecia, being a switch hitter, fighting out of a shell guard, different stances, she's able to attack from different angles and give her opponent different looks. Throw them off. Been fighting an orthodox fighter for the first couple of rounds and suddenly Senecia decides she wants to switch over to southpaw. That surely can affect how you throw your punches and whether or not your punches actually land. It can. Both Senecia Estrada and Tina Ruprecht are 30 years of age. Both unbeaten. Senecia Estrada sports a professional record of 23 wins with no losses, no draws to Tina Ruprecht's 12 wins and no losses with one draw. Senecia's an inch or two taller than Tina Ruprecht, likely inch or two longer as well. Certainly the bigger puncher of the two. What Tina Ruprecht brings to the table is a shorter, stumpier fighter with a lower center of gravity that can make themselves an elusive target, a moving target, bouncing in and out of range to get shots in and safely get out. The thing is that Senecia Estrada, she can do that too. She can do that when she wants to. I feel like in this fight, Senecia Estrada will be the aggressor and Tina Ruprecht will be more or less the defender looking to work off the counter. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Tina can make Senecia look a little bit more human than some other fighters have. Because she's tricky. She's trickier than a Tenkai Tsunami, trickier than an Anna Bell Ortiz. She's in and out, changing levels, getting off counter shots, playing at the angles, whereas with Tenkai, Tenkai is mostly a pressure fighter, and something similar rings true of Annabelle Ortiz. I mean, they're all good fighters, good champions and former champions, but they have their differences, and what rings true when it comes to Tina is that she's tricky, good range of motion, very malleable. What's gonna separate Senecia from Tina is offense, is firepower. Senecia Strata really is the bigger puncher of the two. Senecia, who had a very busy 2021, she fought three times in 2021, but only once last year as a result of promotional issues with her then promoter, Golden Boy Promotions, who she parted ways with, made her top-ranked debut late last year in November. She's loving it. Set to unify titles in the first quarter of this year opposite the ring Tina Ruprecht. Tina? Tina wasn't as active in 2021. She only fought once in 2021, only once in 2022, last month. Opposite the ring, Rocio Gaspar. Tina managed to win a unanimous decision against Rocio. A few months later, she'll be sharing the ring with Senecia. And as stated, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Tina make Senecia look a little bit more human than she usually does because Tina, unlike some other fighters, she really does have a more layered approach. Not dissimilar 
similar from what you see with Senecio. And offense, output, will be the deciding factor. Offense is what's going to separate them, and I happen to think that Senecio Estrada is a more offensively gifted fighter with more firepower than Tina Ruprecht. If she wins, whether or not she can get Yo Costa Valle in the ring to collect the final two belts in this division. It's another matter. Yo Costa Valle is still with Golden Boy Promotions. To my knowledge, she is. She's co-promoted by both Marv Nation and Golden Boy Promotions. We'll just have to cross that bridge when we get to it. March 25th, Senecia Estrada must first get through Germany's own unbeaten champion, Tina Ruprecht, before it even becomes about Yo Costa Valle, and let's see if she can, let's see if she does. In men's lightweight news, Javante Davis on the heels of his knockout win over Hector Garcia says, Haney has belts, but people don't know who he is. Devin knows I'm the real champ. Is he serious? It's important to note that Javante Davis has never won a full-fledged title, a full-fledged world title, in the lightweight division or the super lightweight division, outside of the titles that he won at super featherweight. He's not a full-fledged world champion. He wasn't a full-fledged world champion at super lightweight, and he's not a full-fledged champion now at lightweight. But if you ask Javante Davis, who owns a secondary 135-pound WBA title ever since December of 2019, He's not impressed by Haney's status. They gave Devin Haney a belt. He didn't fight for his belt. When he became undisputed, he waited for Cambosos to win the WBO, WBA, and IBF titles when Teofimo Lopez had the belts. They didn't fight. As quickly as he fought with Cambosos, he could have fought with Teofimo. Both are on the same side. Davis told Brian Custer on the last stand. That's bullshit. It's a revisionist version of history. At that time... Devin Haney was still under contract with Matchroom, boxing on the DAZN side of things. He wasn't on the same side of the street as Teofimo Lopez. In November of 2021, George Cambosos beat Teofimo Lopez for three of the four major titles at lightweight, whereas Devin Haney, his final fight on the Matchroom and DAZN side of things. Remember that Teofimo Lopez was and still is a top rank fighter. He lost to George in November of 2021, whereas Devin's final fight his final fight under the Matchroom banner on the DAZN platform didn't happen until the following month of that same year, December of 2021. Devin and Teofimo weren't on the same side of the street when Teofimo became that division's unified champion, so either Javante Davis is lying... Devin and Teofimo haven't been on the same side of the street until recently. So Javante Davis is either deliberately lying about the timeline or he's just absent-minded. Neither would surprise me because he seems to think he's a real champion. And he's not. Of course he has all these belts now and people still don't know him. He can't fight in his own hometown. He can't sell it out. It just jabs at me, the champ. He knows who the real champ is. You know what I mean? No, I don't, because you're not a champion. The version of the title that Javante Davis holds, the one he's been holding since 2019, is little more than just a segue to fight for the full title, the version of the title that Devin has. And the fact that Javante has been WBA regular champion for this amount of time, for this long, wow. from 2019 until now, wow. and he still hasn't fought for the full title. This guy's a joke. What's even funnier is that when he won that version of the title, nobody was holding it. It was vacant. He fought the very past it over the hill, Yuriorki Skamboa, who was fighting on just one good leg, one good leg. He suffered a torn Achilles tendon throughout the course of the fight. But in a nutshell, Javante Davis is in no position to talk about Devin and how he got his belts when all he did was win a vacant title. Opposite a journeyman who all but went the distance with him, it took Javante Davis 12 rounds to finally stop Yuriorki Skamboa. Which is hardly a good advertisement for him being this George Foreman-like puncher. If it gets down to it, I'm definitely willing to fight. I'm willing to fight for sure. Once the Ryan Garcia fight gets through, I'm willing to fight in a heartbeat. Where have I heard that before? What's infuriating about all of this is watching a protected fighter, a protected fighter like Javante Davis, take shots at a, a young guy, a young champion, who paid the cost to be the boss, who made the necessary sacrifices that Javante Davis would never make. Devin Haney signed on for not just one, not just one fight in Australia, but two. Two fights. George had an immediate rematch clause, and the clause stipulated that both fights would have to go down in his neck of the woods, and Devin didn't hesitate. Made sacrifices. Devin Haney, who stated, he's the champ in his head. I'm the champ on paper. He don't and won't ever have a valid belt 
in the same weight class as me. And that's in whatever weight class we're at. I don't care what Javante Davis told Brian Custer. He's not going to fight Devin Haney. He's going to wait him out. He's going to wait until Devin vacates those titles and moves up in weight so he can be elevated to full champion by way of the secondary title he's been holding since 2019. And if it doesn't happen that way, if Devin loses to Vasil Lomachenko, the same applies. Javante's not going to fight him either. He's been swerving that guy for years. Javante seems to be confusing popularity with professional accolades, and those two obviously aren't the same thing. And they're not. Even if you do have a somewhat bigger social media following or you're somewhat more popular than Devin Haney, you're not more accomplished. When Oscar De La Hoya moved up to middleweight, he was more popular than Bernard Hopkins ahead of their fight. He was definitely more popular, but he wasn't the more accomplished middleweight of the two. He was an accomplished fighter. He was the A-side fighter, the A-side guy. But as far as middleweights go, he wasn't a more accomplished middleweight than Bernard. Bernard was the champion. The same applies here. Maybe Gervonta is more popular than Devin, but he's not more accomplished. Not as a lightweight. Look at their resumes. All Javante Davis has done in the lightweight division is take on a journeyman in Gamboa, a nobody in Isaac Cruz, and a retard in Roly Romero. Those ain't the upper echelon lightweights. Hector Garcia certainly isn't. He's done absolutely nothing at lightweight at best. He was a champion at Super Featherweight. Before you criticize Devin Haney for not winning his belts from Teofimo, it's not like you fought him. It's not like you beat him. George did, and George got beat by Devin Haney. What are you not understanding? Two times, and he made it look easy. Did you miss it? They want you to view Gervonta Davis as a deep thinker and an eloquent speaker, even though he isn't. He wants you to view him as the champion, the real champion. He's not that either. If you want people to think of you as a full-fledged champion, you've had long enough to do it. You've been in possession of that WBA secondary title since December of 2019, and you never once went for the real one. You think that because you're popular, you don't have to, that because you're popular, that's a substitute for actual accolades, when what it really is, what it is is that because you're popular, you can still make decent money kicking cans down the road. Because you're popular, you can still make decent money whilst playing it safe. But that's it. If your popularity is a substitute for anything, it's a substitute for the risks other fighters have to take to make the same money. The same money you do, though. It's not a substitute for actual accolades. It's not a substitute for actual names, actual belts, actual world titles. You're not an actual world champion. You're protected. A bit of a hype job, if you ask me, is the hype around Gervonta Davis far exceeds what he's actually accomplished in the sport of boxing. He's not a three-division champion, even though they bill him as one. Why is that necessary? An interesting choice of words from Gervonta Davis stating, if it's up to me, Ryan's definitely next. We're just waiting for Ryan to accept. Waiting for Ryan to accept? I thought the fight was all but done. If it's not done, then why did you announce it? You literally announced the Ryan Garcia fight before the Hector Garcia fight, even though the Hector Garcia fight was the fight that was done. Shysters. If it's up to me, Ryan is definitely next, Davis said. We somewhat got everything, you know what I mean? Going in the right direction. So we're just waiting for Ryan to accept on his side, and let's get the job done. If he does beat Ryan, and he does get the job done, does that make him the most accomplished lightweight? Does that make him more accomplished than Devin Haney? No. Ryan Garcia isn't more accomplished at lightweight or, or super lightweight than anybody. Look, he's a very popular... He's very popular. He's very marketable. He's a young fighter. He's all of those things. But he's not more accomplished than Devin at lightweight, and he's not more accomplished than anyone at super lightweight. So why would beating him? Why would beating him make Gervonta more accomplished than Devin Haney. They're ready for that money, Davis replied when informed Oscar De La Hoya, whose company promotes Ryan Garcia, wished him luck before he stopped Hector Luis Garcia. That's what it is. They're ready to get that money. I appreciate him for, you know, wishing me luck. You know what I mean? Ryan and Gervonta, it's coming soon. What is it? According to Gervonta, it doesn't even sound like it's done yet, and we know that it's supposed to be going down the same month as Spence versus Thurman on the same platform. Staging two box office fights the same month on the same platform 
could hurt the buy rate of both. You're forcing the consumers to choose. In many ways, that's what you're doing. Oh. They have to choose. I do think they choose the Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia fight over the Spence versus Thurman fight if they can only buy one. And I do think, giving the following, the social media following that both of these young fighters have, it has the potential to reach a million pay-per-view buys. At minimum, I think it has that potential, though there's something to be said about staging two box office fights that close together. Javante Davis went on to say that Ryan Garcia's crazy to think he'd KO him in two rounds. He has high hopes. He certainly does. He really likes his chances against Javante Davis for whatever reason. This fight's the top priority to Ryan. Ryan has high hopes. He's a fighter. Fighters have to speak highly and think highly of themselves. He's talking and he's actually putting in the work, Davis told Brian Custer on the Last Stand podcast. He's not taking any fights and he's focusing on me. We can't overlook his statement, you know what I mean? We just have to be mindful that he's coming. I definitely have to be prepared. I'll make sure to prepare myself just as much or much harder than him. Javante says that Ryan isn't taking any fights because he's focused on him, where according to Ryan Garcia, the reason he's not taking any fights is because he was given an ultimatum. An ultimatum by Javante Davis's handlers, who stated in so many words, if he has a fight before the Davis fight, then the fight with Davis is off. We talked about that in my previous video and how, if that's true, what they're trying to do is handicap Ryan. It's bad enough they're already implementing a catch weight for this thing. I mean, you were fine fighting Mario Barrios at 140 pounds. Why aren't you fine fighting Ryan Garcia at 140 pounds? Two rounds. That's a strong prediction. I feel as though two rounds. That's crazy, said Davis. Roly Romero said the same thing. I don't know what they're thinking. Garcia has seen it personally sitting up close. He made a bet with Errol Spence and he lost that bet. Tell him to bet again. For sure. It'd be monumental for Ryan if he could take out Javante Davis in just two rounds, though that's a ballsy prediction and a bet I wouldn't take. Career best win for Ryan Garcia if he can pull it off, though he has some pros and cons. Some things that are working for him and some things that are working against him. Having to cut down to 136 pounds. Ryan was always very statuesque for the lightweight division. He's now campaigning as a super lightweight. And he's very young. His body is still growing. Having to cut down to 136 pounds can't be helping him. Size and scale of the fight and the fight's profile does have the big fight feel, though make no mistake, whoever the winner turns out to be, they're not the authority at 135 pounds. They might be the most popular fighter. And that's worth something in terms of marquee value. I'd be lying to you if I said that it wasn't, though neither man. Neither Javante Davis or Ryan Garcia are the authority at either 135 pounds or 140. Irrespective of who wins. That doesn't make it a bad fight, but that's reality. Don't confuse popularity with ability, and don't confuse popularity and marquee value with accolades. They're really not the same thing, and one is not a substitute for the other.